Great, folks, we're back. We just finished with Michael Crow, president of ASU. That was a very fast-paced conversation. Hopefully, it was a very informative conversation. I'm pleased to welcome now Melissa Davis, who is the founder and CEO. CEO or founder? Founder or co-founder? Co-founder and CEO. So you have a little bit of help. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Going outs. And Melissa, rather than me trying to explain what it is that you do it with Go Announce. I'm going to let you, you do that first, all right? Sure. Um, Go Announce is a way for students to announce and share and track all of their educational and extracurricular mm -hmm. achievements in a social space so that we also provide access to real opportunities. They can fundraise and access exclusive brand-sponsored scholarships as they're sharing these achievements, and it's also a tracking tool. So it creates a real-time e-portfolio of everything they're doing year after year, tracking everything from volunteer hours to science projects in a safe, social space. And this is a private e-portfolio though in the sense it's not necessarily sponsored by individual schools. It's, it's it occupies yeah. the space kind of parallel with my Facebook life and my other other things that I might do on social media to let the world see me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's controlled by the student. The student is the user. Um, think about it's very similar to almost like a high school version of a LinkedIn. If you think okay. about how adults use LinkedIn to leverage their achievements and goals to access career opportunities, high school students have nothing conducive to ac to leverage uh, their accomplishments and goals to get what they need, which we associate with staying on track for college and okay. access to funding to increase their achievement. You know, in a prior life, I used to be with a project at UCLA, the annual freshman survey, 300,000 mm. students a year surveyed. And during the 80s, particularly, as the economic downturn occurred, we began to see students building what I characterize as they were doing portfolio management huh. early on. It, you know, yeah. uh, I think the place you, you used to see this early and often was with the students who wanted to go to medical school. Yeah. They recognized it wasn't what they did for four years in college, but we began to see high school students thinking about, okay, what do I need to do to build the portfolio in terms of internships, work experience, learn more about what medicine is really about as opposed to the televised presence and begin to share that both as part of my, my work experience, my college application, and then carry that forward. Sounds like this is now more than just the kind of the triathlon that aspiring med students do, but given the economic environment and other things, you're enabling that for a lot of students as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, we like to say we're giving students a voice and mm -hmm. that every student is unique and different, whether you're a STEM student, whether you're a student athlete, whether you're a music student, this gives you the tools to track your accomplishments, um, communicate with yep. mentors, and also access funding again if you need it. Um, it's very interesting when you, when you bring up colleges, um, one of the things we're doing now is going into school systems with a career readiness uh, curriculum that mm -hmm. teaches students how to build a positive digital footprint for college readiness because a lot of you have now as of 2014 according to Kaplan uh, almost 40 percent of college admissions admit to looking at students social media pages and they're not necessarily doing this in my opinion from conversations with college admissions because they're looking to police students and find out all of the negative things about this they're doing it because they want to understand right. that this student is who they say they're they are again if they're into STEM computer programming if they're into volunteering finding some sort of proof that this student is who they say they are and that they're accepting the right candidates so when they're searching their social media are they using social media can be a very powerful tool and are they using it in a way that's empowering them to in, again increase their achievement in terms of getting accepted into a college how many students on the platform now and what does that compared to a year or two years ago? Mm -hmm. We have about 100,000 students. Mm -hmm. Right now we're growing by about 6 to 8% per month. Um, a year ago uh, we had just about 40,000 students um, and now going into school systems next fall we've just launched the curriculum recently and it's already been picked up by over 30 districts across the nation including the 11th biggest district in the nation so as of next Which fall. Which is, you may as well give them the plug. <laughs> Palm Beach County. Okay. So we're very excited to be working with them. Yeah. One of the conversations I had with Michael Mo two years ago at the Consumer Electronics Show, and Michael, mm -hmm. one of the founders of GSV yeah. and the presidents here, is that what's, what strikes me, and he seemed to affirm this about this wave of the education technology wave compared to during the dot-com era, is that earlier wave was people looking for an opportunity who had not come out of education, more so now it's people who have come out of education. They've been in Teach for America, they've been in college classrooms, something they want to directly connect that experience and something needing to be better. Is there a personal story for you in terms of, of how you, you know, the, the emergence, the, the creation story or the creation myth about e -announce? Yeah, actually, um, so my background was not as an educator. Mm -hmm. My background was as a film producer, so uh -huh. I spent 10 years um, producing uh, independent movies. 
Uh, and I had a website with my sister, who's actually my co-founder. It was a graduation announcement website. And we, we let students announce their graduations for free with family and friends. And it included then, gift registry? Yeah, it included a gift <laughs> registry. Right. And uh, friends and family could send money. Right. We thought, why should kids have to pay to tell someone they graduated? Right. Those graduation announcements are silly. And um, when it really started to take off, not only were the kids sending these free announcements and people sending them gifts, we gave, a, we gave them a grad page to talk about all the things they had done in school. Mm -hmm. And that quickly became the most popular feature. And at the time, we thought, kids aren't going to use this. They have a bunch of social pages. Yeah. Why do they need another one? But what was interesting was we had a comment feature on that page. And all the comments from the friends and family were related to, I didn't know or I could have helped. And we thought, well, who cares about graduation? This is the first 18 to 22 years of a student's life. They go through tons of ups and downs. And they should be able to connect their network to their goals and accomplishments so that they can increase their achievement. And basically, that they weren't leveraging social media. They're, they're on social media all day, but there really wasn't a tool for them to leverage what they wanted to do to kind of access their goals and increase their achievement. Let me come back to the portfolio aspects of this. Mm -hmm. For s certain students who apply to competitive colleges, the whole notion of letters of recommendation are very important. Yeah. Do you allow teachers to post as well about Casey was a great student? So teachers can follow yeah. students on the platform. So the way it works is a student builds a student page, and then they can invite followers. Okay. And then the followers, we actually try to make it really easy for the followers to engage that they don't have to make an account. They just sort of subscribe to the student's updates. So as a student posts an announcement, whether they're sharing themselves volunteering mm -hmm. or a science project, you know, whatever it might be, that announcement comes to the follower's email. And then they can like, comment, um, and send back feedback or encouragement. And then so teachers can follow students. And it's a safe platform. We have a lot of safety filters built in place. Right. Um, so students, we do have a lot of teachers following students. And they can comment with words of encouragement. But the interesting thing is we've gotten a lot of feedback from teachers who love to review students' pages when they're writing letters of recommendation. Right. Because it's an easy way to go back. And you know they're having to write a recommendation. But maybe they taught the student two years ago. And they don't know what they've done recently. Or they're their teacher now. And they don't know what they did three years ago in school. So it's a great way to kind of go back and get an overview of the students so to help them write the letters of recommendation. I want to come back to the numbers. You mentioned about 100,000 mm -hmm. students currently. Yeah. What's the demography of those students? It might be easy to infer that these are you know, tech savvy high school kids who understand, who are active on Facebook and every place else. Yeah. You know, it, it's, uh, they do it. And so this is just providing more opportunities as opposed to those who may be less savvy or have less resources and understand less about the college going process and how this might help. Well, so one of our primary acquisition yeah. channels to date has actually been through a monthly scholarship that's sponsored uh -huh. by a third party, You Promise. And so we are seeing students demographically that mm -hmm. are, tend to be in financial need because they're looking for a scholarship. These right. also, you know, it's opened up to students as early as ninth grade. So students as early as ninth grade are actively already looking for scholarships and financial need out, out there. So then they are actively using our fundraising tool as well because they're coming on the platform and realizing, oh, I can also fundraise for whether it's my athletics, um, college application fees, or even start a fundraiser for my tuition and really empowering them to take control of their own educational goals. Yeah. So as the parent of two now college-educated mm -hmm. kids, it, it does seem a little odd that we start doing this kind of crowdsourcing. Yeah. You know, um, and yet it begins earlier and earlier in terms of the experience of young families trying to essentially save money and, and uh, also deal with human, you know, sort of build human capital for college. What's been the response to the crowdsourcing? I, 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 you know, well, it's actually and so yeah. interestingly when we decided to mm -hmm. um, implement the crowdfunding tool into the platform. Originally, when we conceived this to kind of make it more of a year-round place right. for students of all ages to share and track their achievements with their social network and their mentor network, um, we added the crowdfunding tool specifically because we were looking at all the budget cuts happening around um, in the public school system. Right. For example, in certain parts of the country now, you have to pay athletic fees to play a sport. You have to it's pay. It's a bake sale mentality. Yeah, you know, you whether have to, it's for sports right. or music or theater. AP classes. Right. I mean, the point for me of going to public, I went to public school. You got to kind of get ahead or participate in mm -hmm. things without having to have that burden. So a lot of families, you know, the fifty dollar athletic fee that can be a lot of money to certain families. Um, or right now paying to take AP classes or paying for the book. And so really, we added the crowdfunding tool to empower students who might not be able to afford that athletic fee to save $50. If I can create a fundraiser online and you know put that out to my network and ask for $5 for each 
from each person I might know or, you know, kind of put that out there and crowdsource that to, again, empower them to kind of take control of that if their family isn't in a situation to immediately help them. And then interestingly, we we see, we kind of thought students would fundraise for, you know, smaller amounts and, yeah. and that was really the vision. The average fundraiser, you know, we see is for around $3,000 that they're launching, you know, whether it's tuition, whether it's um, travel opportunities right. to attend a conference, um, a sporting event uh, or a tournament or, you know, studying abroad opportunities. How many are successful with that, that effort and how much of the, you know, in average, mm -hmm. you know, how, how much of, of the goal do they typically get? So we see it? students are achieving about, actually only about 10% of what they're fundraising for. And we right. found, interestingly enough, that we're actually a platform that's teaching students how to market themselves for the first right. time. So, you know, they'll create a fundraiser, for example, let's say they're a uh, freshman in college fundraising for textbooks, create mm -hmm. a $500 or $1,000 fundraise for their textbooks when they realize how much they're going to cost. And they'll write a few line description and post it on their Facebook wall once and kind of spend more time writing into us saying, but I didn't get any donations than really marketing themselves and learning right. that, you know, they have to send constant reminders instead of just writing, I need textbooks. It should be about why this is, why these textbooks are important to them, why this class is important to them, how it's going to, mm -hmm. you know, go towards their major and what they want to do in the future. And so really, you know, we've had to make a lot of tweaks to the platform to almost like think for the students, teach, again, teaching them how to market themselves, teaching them how to sell themselves, teaching yeah. them how to put so, it out there. So in the context of those tweaks, how much user education really goes on? Is it a matter that I just go to a page and I fill in? Or are you running to uh, sort of sidebar tutorials and other kinds of short video yeah. moments to help students understand social media, marketing, Curr uh, the messaging. Yeah. Currently not, not video. We're yeah. looking to add a lot of video because we know yeah. that's what students 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 like and it makes it easier. Um, you know, it's a lot of text now when they create a fundraiser, for example, they have to answer a series of questions about why mm -hmm. it's important, what they're going to do with the money. Um, and that was something we just launched to the fundraising. You know, we made improvements to the fundraising platform to make them be more successful just a couple months ago. Um, and we give them examples, like, for example, if they're fundraising for they can pick categories of types of things they're fundraising for, whether it's their own philanthropy or college application fees or athletics. Yep. And so depending on the category, we give them kind of a perfect example. And then they have a guide that also tells them how often they should be promoting it. And then they get triggers from us, whether they're using the app, you know, reminders, you're fundraising it. Have you, you know, sent reminders mm -hmm. to the people you've sent it to, resend it, post it to your social media. Um, so yeah, they do. It's a lot of triggers from us and, yep. you know, kind of guiding them along the way. It's been a long time since I've been in an obstetrician's office, but you go to an obstetrician's office, you see all these pictures of happy babies. <laughs> these are the fan kids I've delivered, you know, for the, on the part of the physician. Yeah. Um, do you have those stories as well? Um, yeah. It, interestingly, you know, it, at first our kind of super users were more of um, the, the type A student. You know, it was right. really more of like this excited to kind of be a nerd and talk about right. all of their achievements, which, you know, we thought was, were awesome and they still tend to be, still are very active super users posting multiple things a day. You know, we thought, oh, this is something a student will update their page once a month, mm -hmm. maybe twice a month. And, and then those students are using it again, multiple times a day. They're just yep. really excited, which is awesome. Um, but, you know, for us, it's kind of navigating out of that, not that we don't want them to use it because this is, of course, a tool for them. Yeah. Um, but how do you teach the students who are getting frustrated in school because they're not straight A students? They didn't get perfect test scores. That you know what? What that are you doing? Me. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing after school? What are you doing on the soccer team? Where did you volunteer? What are your you know your music interests? Like that again. When we kind of go back to giving students a voice, and now we're really excited about this going into mm -hmm. the classroom, where it can be something teachers work with a student on, where it shouldn't be oh this anxiety of well I don't have anything to post or I didn't get my science project back and get an A plus on it, but you know I. Don't don't have anything to be proud of and kind of teaching them that yeah. yes you do and your own individual unique achievements are very important to who you are and someone's going to be Sounds very like interested you're helping in those. students with that journey of self-discovery in ways yeah. that you know, when we talk about college and so much of the attention president crow who just was in here a few moments ago mm -hmm. talked about so much focus on elite kids and hyper competitive colleges and most of us are not part of that world yeah you're helping a lot of students with that journey of self-discovery right yeah, and that's why, you know, again, we're thrilled to be mm -hmm. going into school systems because I think it should be something a teacher is working with a student on. It's just yeah. as important when you talk about college readiness, if a goal of, you know, secondary uh, or, you know, middle school and high school education is to prepare students for college, they have to be working with them, A, not only on their social media because it can get them into trouble yeah. and teaching them how it can be very empowering, but also on understanding their own strengths and weaknesses and, and not letting them get discouraged by this college application and competitive process right. and, and letting them understand where their own strengths lie. Great. 
Melissa, thanks very much for joining us. Are you yeah, having a good thank conference? You. Yeah, it's been wonderful so far. Great. All right. <laughs> so again, I'm talking with Melissa Davis, who is a co-founder and CEO of Go Announce. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and next up will be Dan Greenstein, who is the C program director, post-secondary, the director, pardon me, of post-secondary success for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We'll be right back. Thank you.